Good afternoon, tribe members. This is a follow-up video to a post that I posted a while ago, and I just got a question, I got a comment actually by somebody who um, felt, uh, was interested in the data and interested in the video, and then took what he understood of that video and went and asked his, a couple of veterinarians about the information, and they didn't know what he was talking about, which is very common. So when we're talking about DNA data and the gene pool and DNA testing, there are a couple of products out there. And there's a couple of products that I do not recommend because I think that it is a very deceptive marketing plan that was created on the part of a multi-billion dollar industry. Um, DNA harvesting is a multi-billion dollar industry. They sell the DNA data to research companies, pharmaceutical companies, um, and obtaining that DNA data um, is a unique um, business opportunity. So we have 23andMe for people, right? You can go do 23andMe. We have Ancestry.com. We've got a couple of DNA tests. Then we have things like Wisdom Panel for dogs, and we have Embark. And we also have a DNA test through UC Davis Veterinary Genetics Labs that it was specifically created six or seven years ago. I was the breed sponsor for this. I solicited uh, breeders to bring their dogs DNA data to UC Davis to create the baseline to break down the gene pool information of the Doberman Pinscher utilizing the science that has been used for, I don't know, 50, 60 years or so, conservation breeding in zoos. Zoos have limited populations of animals and cannot afford to breed too closely in line breeding. So purebred animals are line bred. All of them are. Cattle, horses, everything. They choose animals that are you know, going to be complementary in a breeding, but oftentimes in a closed population, like a zoo, like San Diego Zoo, like the, you know, um, New York Zoo, if they've got a giraffe and San Diego has a giraffe, they have a DNA test of these animals and a database upon which you can compare these animals and see how closely related they are. You don't want to breed a brother to a sister, right? You don't want to breed two giraffes that are that closely related. Well, how would you know? How would you know how closely related they are unless there's some kind of a test, right? How would you know? So the same holds true for dogs. Every single solitary breed has a gene pool, a closed gene pool, right? Dobermans are 150 years old. Dobermans had founding animals that helped create this breed. Then the breed standard was created and the breed book was closed. No more entries. No more animals can be added. The Doberman is created. That's 150 years old now. That gene pool has been vastly affected by several different incidences that have happened in the world um, that have affected these gene pools. Now, Dobermans were dramatically affected by World War I. So were many other dogs in Europe, many other breeds. But World War II came along and it was even worse. So millions and millions of animals, all different purebred animals, were killed just like people. And people had to unalive their own animals because in some places they would be eaten for food. So a lot of animals were destroyed during World War II, which created what is called a bottleneck in the breed. The Doberman Pinscher had a very adverse event in the 1980s when a bunch of dumbass, dumbass, the same dumbasses that want to eliminate DCM 1 and 2 quote unquote carriers, there is no such thing as a carrier of a marker for a gene that we do not know whether it is correlative or causative. These two words constitute what is considered a threat to a gene pool. Is it causative? Is it correlative? DCM1 and 2 markers are not correlative to DCM. 
it has been disproved. So suggesting that people stop using a dog that has a DCM one and two marker is a very bad decision. It is the same decision that was made in the 1980s by a bunch of dumbasses who did not know what a recessive gene was. Recessive traits, von Wildebrand's disease, is a recessive trait, meaning both parents must have the disease to create affected offspring. Von Wildebrand's disease is a bleeding disorder in Dobermans that is highly self-regulating. Most Dobermans who even are affected should still be bred, just bred to a clear dog because 99% of them can have their ears done, can have anything done to them except for internal injuries. They can bleed to death from that. So discounting the use of a valuable pedigree dog because it had a carrier, it was a carrier of Von Wildebrand's, hundreds of thousands of dogs were eliminated because of these dumbasses. And the same dumbasses are making the same dumbass correlations to DCM1 and 2. And talking about removing them from the gene pool as if this is going to stop a polygenic, 30 to 100 genes involved in the DCM conundrum is why we will never solve it. Removing a DCM1 and 2 dog is a terrible idea. This breed had these three significant bottlenecks that have fucked the Doberman breeds genetic diversity of 42 breeds using this 40 or 50 year old test that was used for conservation breeding projects of captive animals like zoo animals and others is now available for the Doberman breeder. The Doberman breeder can use the same technology that multi-million dollar conservation projects and zoos are using to make sure the kinship the close relationship of those animals isn't too close. What's too close? We have a sliding scale of numbers that tells us what's too close. So when you get your dog DNA tested through UC Davis and upload that data to a betterbred.com website, you have interjected DNA from another Doberman, adding it to the Dober base, Doberman database, Doberman gene pool data and information, and actually helping us with our breed and understand it. The more dogs we have tested through UC Davis Diversity, VGL, listed on the Better Bread website, which has been around for six or seven years now, there's 2,000 people using it and 42 breeds are using it, last I checked. The Poodle Club of America donated $60,000 to poodle owners to be able to use this test because they were so impressed with the data. Genetics breeders are using this data, blown away by what they're learning. By having their animals tested, using this database to be able to figure out what the kinship is of these dogs, not just based on their pedigree. And when we have this data and we do this testing and we participate in these kinds of things, we're actually advancing the science and understanding of this breed. Of course, veterinarians who are not line breeding their dogs and studying up on this stuff are aware of this. Of course they're not. But when you have the chief of the veterinary genetics labs who writes an entire um, story about how replete the Doberman Pinscher breed is, it's worse than the bulldog, maybe we should listen. Maybe we should pay attention. Maybe we should be using this study and reading the data about it and going to the Better Bread website and reading their blog. You guys will learn something. So that's why the veterinarians don't know, because it's not their area of expertise. It just happens to be mine. <laughs>